Why factories shut down continues to become a more complex subject. On the surface, it appears to be nobody's business but the company owner. Yet, as we investigate further, there begins to emerge a dark side that needs disclosure. As we uncover these complex tactics, we need society to open their minds to what is right and what is wrong. Is it legal? And what are the boundaries? Are the undisclosed facts leading to factory shutdown ethical for our society and for future responsibility? small Hampshire-based fisheries consultancy, Malaysia's first astronaut, and Britain's penchant for drinking Spanish wine have in common. They all have their origins in big international arms deals. To clinch a sale, defense companies have lured Amani fish, marketed Spanish wine in Britain, and paid for Malaysia's space program. These often secret side perks are already big business, but they're set to become a half trillion dollar industry, shifting jobs and technology from west to east. Projects like these have never been more important to a defense company's bottom line in the cutthroat business of selling arms from Saudi Arabia to South Korea. It is increasingly the deciding factor in defense trade. If a company doesn't do offsets, they don't do business. It's that simple. Is this example of why factory shutdown ethical? For the first time, the FT has calculated the size of these obligations. The US and Europe's top 12 defense companies have committed themselves to offsets totaling $75 billion. Offsets are big and growing fast, especially in Saudi, the UAE, and India, which are the world's largest markets. There's not much data available because the whole business is shrouded in secrecy. Countries see the deals as intrinsic to their national security. Companies believe they are a critical competitive business advantage, and sometimes corrupt politicians see them as a way to make friends and a quick buck. It's often surprised me that investors don't take a greater interest in this. Now, I think that's partly because offset is almost the hidden side of defense, and this is a huge area. We see obligations at the conservative estimates, 75, uh, 100 billion dollars over the next decade. Uh, the actual figure could be far, far greater than that. A global business conglomerate visits a nation that requires development. Firstly, the corporate executives recommend a defense contract to secure their nation's safety. The developing nation does not have the necessary billions to pay for advanced weaponry systems. What then? The executives offer a solution called military offsets that can assist at providing revenue streams and take advantage of the developing nation's resources or impoverished labor. We have factories that can benefit us both by providing income to assist you with payments. We will partner and share the wealth. We can provide a factory to generate income as part of the defense contract. We will deliver equipment, technology, and know-how, along with a guaranteed market share to supply and share revenue. The deal is struck. A global defense strategy is in play. Back at home, the company executives now converge on the domestic town factory and advise the shutdown. They tell them, oh, the income is not sufficient to continue with further investment. The information about obtaining a defense contract was not told and the fact that your factory was sacrificed is not disclosed. Let me explain what just happened. Your factory was relocated to a developing nation to increase profit to be invested in military arms. Sounds like an artificial arms race to me, and it certainly explains why some factories are shut down and forced labor is on the rise. We are talking about the potential sales of trillions of dollars in weapons to assist developing nations at ramping up power with the prestige of fighter aircraft and SAM missiles to plug and play. Some say if we don't do it, the other side will. So it's us or them. 
What the hell is happening to our planet? It can be ethical to sell defensive weapons that provide security for other nations. But a tactical manipulation that leads to an escalating global arms race in developing nations is unethical. Let's review the definition of ethics. The basic concepts and fundamental principles of decent human conduct. Ethics include values such as the essential equality of all men and women, human rights and natural rights, obeying the law of the land with concern for health, safety, and for the natural environment. Being ethical is not the same as doing whatever society accepts. Some countries accept slavery as a norm, but that does not make it ethical. Slavery and forced labor to some have different standards. In any society, there are debates between rich and poor, powerful and weak, and of course, armed and defenseless. US arms have doubled during last year and now account for more than two-thirds of all foreign weapon sales. That's according to an American congressional study. The jump came amid a fall in worldwide sales and most of the US arms contracts were signed with developing countries. While military spending from the United States has slightly decreased, spending from strategic US-aligned regimes around the world is dramatically rising. And that despite recent cuts, the United States remains the main exporter of weapons and supplier of military aid. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Go, sweetheart. Go get a game. Go get up, Tiger. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Okay. Good luck.